Hey everyone. So, the Switch Lite's been out about a month now. And so far, I haven't reviewed it yet, although pretty much every other channel out there has reviewed it. All I've done so far is a first impressions video and an unboxing. However, that was on purpose. The reason why is because basically I don't feel comfortable reviewing a whole console after only a few hours or even just a few days of gameplay, especially when we're talking about a portable console where the overall feeling after hours of gameplay comes into the comes into play, comes into factor with the system. And also to give yourself a chance to really play every different kind of game that you normally play. And so basically what I've done is for the past month, I've gamed exclusively on my Switch Lite. Basically, the only time I used my OG Switch in the last month is when I actually needed gameplay footage with my capture card for the videos I make for you guys, which accounts for maybe four or five hours. But other than that, I have probably 80 plus hours of gameplay now on the uh, Switch Lite, which after that, I feel pretty comfortable now being able to give you all the upsides and some of the downsides that this console has. So properly review it, basically. And honestly, I'm really glad I took this extra time. The reason why is because some of the points I'm gonna make are in complete contradiction to what I had in my first impressions video, because after a while of gameplay, I realized that those first impressions were misleading, unfortunately. First of all, in case you're unaware, the Switch Lite is a portable only version of the original Nintendo Switch. What it means is it plays all the same games as your original Nintendo Switch, uh, minus those that require motion controls to be able to play them. However, we'll get back to that in a second. And by portable only, basically what it means is this console can't be docked. Basically, if you put it in a dock, it's just not going to output any image to your television. So you have to play it in portable mode. However, as I said earlier, even though it can't be docked and in its base, it doesn't have motion controls or rumble. Uh, it is compatible with accessories that have those functions. So for example, if you match up a couple of Joy-Cons to your Switch Lite, you'll be able to play games that require motion controls. So ultimately, for the moment, till Nintendo pops something else out, this is, in my opinion, the successor to the 2DS slash 3DS line of portable consoles. And that brings me directly to my first upside of this console. What's a little bit revolutionary about it is that for the first time ever, the dedicated portable console of a manufacturer plays the same generation games as the home console version. In the past, we've been used to that the portable only versions feel like the games are generally one to even two generations behind the home console version. Now, I know what you guys are gonna be thinking it's sort of cheating. The reason why is because the Switch in itself was already a sort of hybrid home console to portable console. And you're right. However, what is revolutionary is to have access to the portable library at this price point. Basically, in the past, a home console was easily twice the price of the portable console. However, now with the Switch Lite running close to $200, it's the first time in history that the dedicated portable console, like I said, at this price point, which is almost the same as the 3DS launched at originally, is available to you and it plays the complete library of the home console games. So basically, for way cheaper, Parents at Christmas are going to be able to buy a second Switch for the household, but opt for the Switch Lite instead, and they won't have to reinvest into a game library. It'll already play the games you bought for the home console version of the Switch. And if you have many kids like I do, you know that sometimes arguments over who gets to use the console is frequent. So honestly, this option at Christmas is going to be a real eye opener for a lot of parents. And another good point about the Switch Lite is that it's already compatible with most of the peripherals that are already out there for your OG Switch, such as the Joy-Cons, as I mentioned earlier, the Pro Controller, and even mul most of the charging multi-ports will function directly with the Switch. Even my favorite, the Hori USB multi-port adapter, will function with your Switch, meaning that you can charge and have access to uh, four standard USB ports with that stand. 
and it works perfectly with the Switch Lite. And I'll be honest with you guys, it's maybe one of the first downsides of this console is that you're going to want, if this is your only Switch, you're going to want to eventually invest in having some form of either stand with a wireless controller or a USB stand, like I said, with a wired controller. Because even though I would say for most of the games out there, you'll have no problem playing it in portable mode with the standard uh, integrated controls. Every now and again, you're gonna come across a game where either you just don't have the comfort level you need to play the game properly. I'm thinking specifically of 2D Fighters, which we'll get to in a few moments. Uh, you're really going to want to have the option to put your Switch Lite on a stand, grab your controller, and have a standard controller in hand. And overall, if this is going to be your only Switch Lite, there are also moments where you're maybe going to want to pop it in the stand, lay back with a controller, and be able to play it without having to be tilted over it while playing for long hours. And that's something that really came up over my month of gameplay only on this console, if you're out on the go and you play in like half hour, 45 minute sessions, you're perfectly fine with the console itself. But if, if you're looking at extended gameplay sessions, you're going to want to have a stand and maybe a controller option. And if you want, I have a video specifically on that, which you guys can check out, which gives you the different combos that I recommend for the uh, controller slash stand for your Switch Lite. So since we're already sort of on the subject, we'll move on to one of the unfortunately major letdowns of the console. I was really excited when Nintendo showed this console with a D-pad. And at first, in my first impressions video, I thought the D-pad was actually pretty solid for every type of gameplay. More specifically, I, was, I mentioned 2D fighters. And even though at first it seemed like the D-pad had a good uh, response rate to inputs, uh, over time, I realized that unfortunately, the D-pad is actually really bad for rolling motions. So sort of your Hadoukens, uh, even in Dragon Ball Z Fighters, uh, Fighter Z, sorry about that, uh, any type of rolling motion, uh, you're going to drop those motions, unfortunately, on a regular basis because the diagonal will just not input on this D-pad. And that was actually really disappointing. And actually, it's actually, it's, also, what's even more disappointing is it would have been really easy for Nintendo to pinpoint this issue and actually fix it because the, the main reason why uh, you can't input diagonals, and I'm pretty sure about what I'm saying, is that the D-pad is actually not raised up enough. So when you put pressure on the diagonal, what happens is your thumb hits the console itself and you're not able to put enough pressure on the diagonal to, for it to register in the game. So basically, uh, had Nintendo put a slightly higher raised up D-pad, I'm pretty sure this issue would not be present. But unfortunately for the moment, it's a major letdown. And when I'm playing 2D fighters, and I don't wanna be dropping like 25% of my rolling motions, uh, I'm having to select, unfortunately, to go back to a pro controller or a wired controller to be able to play those games. However, on the sort of slight upside, it is much better than the four separate buttons on the Joy-Con, nonetheless. However, not perfect, like I mentioned. And for platformers, where the diagonals are direct inputs rather than rolling inputs, you don't have as much of that issue where you sort of hit the side of the, the, uh, the, the body itself and you're not able to input that diagonal. So for platformers, however, it has a pretty solid track record. I would say it's still much better than the four separate buttons that we had on the OG Switch. Although I would have really liked Nintendo to put a lot of attention in that D-pad. And I can't believe that in testing that issue hadn't come up and they weren't able to correct it because I can easily tell the difference between this and a, a, a perfectly good D-pad is that simply it's raised up, I would say maybe one or two millimeters higher. Now, coming back to an upside. So the Switch Lite being a quite a bit smaller than the original Switch in portable mode, uh, feels a lot more comfortable in hand. And because the Joy-Cons are not detachable, there are downsides to that, but the upside is that 
since the body is all one solid piece, it does actually feel, in my opinion, a lot sturdier in hand. And when I'm playing games, and even if I'm, you know, right into it and putting a lot of pressure on this console, I don't feel like it's gonna break like sometimes I was feeling on my original Switch, unfortunately. And although the screen is smaller, it almost has the exact same uh, pixel density as the original Switch. So being smaller with the same density, what happens is that the image in some games even looks clearer in portable mode on the Switch Lite than it does on your original Switch. So, and after a while, honestly, you don't even realize that the screen is smaller. It's that same impact as most portable consoles. Once you're playing for a while, you get immersed in the screen itself. And since it's a good quality screen, you're not gonna have a problem with the smaller form factor in most games. One important thing to note though, the screen on the Switch Lite, contrary to the original Switch, does not have an auto brightness function. You have to adjust the brightness of the screen manually. Now this is something just to be aware of, because if you're in a dimly lit room and your eyes are being burned out by the brightness, you have to lower it yourself and vice versa. If you go outside, you have to think of raising the brightness or else you're gonna, you know, basically your game's gonna look washed out. For me, it wasn't a big hassle though, because I'll be honest with you, on my original Switch, I often override the brightness anyway, preferring to choose my own level of brightness above the one that the console uh, puts automatically. So for me, it wasn't a big issue, but it is something to be aware of. Now we're gonna touch on probably, in my opinion, what for me was the biggest letdown of the Switch Lite. And it doesn't have to unfortunately do with the console itself, it has to do for the moment with Nintendo's politics on digitally downloaded games. So if you're unaware, if you link, if you own, basically this issue is only present if you own multiple Switches, okay? So basically, if you sign in to the same Nintendo account on two Switches, you can only play digitally downloaded games on one of them at a time. Now you're gonna tell me that's normal, you don't want to, play, you know, you shouldn't be able to play the same game on two different Switches at the same time. And you're totally right on that point. But you can't play any two digitally downloaded games on two Switches at the same time, even if it's not the same game. And I understand why Nintendo did this. They want to prevent account sharing, where 10 people share the same Nintendo account, invest money, and basically everyone shares the same 10 games. But unfortunately, since the Switch Lite, as I said in one of my earlier points, I think it's going to be a real option for families with multiple kids that own multiple Switches. It makes no sense that parents would have to buy two copies of every game so that their kids can play at the same time on the two Switches, which is the main point of getting two Switches. Now, if you've invested heavily in only physical games, as for the moment I have, it's once again not gonna be a huge issue for you because physical games don't have this issue. You can play a physical copy of Mario Kart on one Switch while you're playing a physical copy of Smash Brothers on another, or you can play a digital game on one of the two Switches while the other Switch is playing a physical game. However, if you wanna play two digital games, for the moment there is a sort of workaround that I'll make a separate video on, but for the moment, just to let you know, by Nintendo standards, it's not possible. They did say they were gonna remedy this for families that own multiple Switches. However, for the moment, it's not done. Until it is delivered, we don't know how long it's gonna take. So be aware that if you've already been investing for two years into digitally downloaded games with your original Switch, and you're thinking, I'm gonna buy this separate Switch so that you know my kids can play on one, I can play on the other, you're gonna come across this issue on multiple occasions where one of the two Switches, whichever isn't your primary, is gonna get shut down because unfortunately you can't be playing two digitally downloaded games at the same time. And like I said, it makes no sense to me because digitally downloaded games right now, most of the time aren't even cheaper than physical copies. So why should you have that restriction for digital games when you don't have it for physical copies? It's, it's beyond me for the moment, and I'm glad Nintendo said they will work on it. I just wish they would have worked on it before releasing this console. So overall, this review has been pretty up and down, and that is sort of my feelings on the console. It has some really strong positive points. For example, like I said, having access to the full Switch library of games, but a much lower price point. 
For someone who already owns the original Switch and wants a second console, he doesn't have to reinvest in a separate library of games. That is an awesomely po positive point. And the overall form factor and the overall options that you do have with this console in your hand are much, much more comfortable than the original Switch were. However, then on the downside, the downsides are you know, for one of them was a major letdown for me in the sense that I was really, really anticipating this D-pad to be a solution to not have to drag around a pro controller. Although even some games, you know, you'll be better off with a pro controller. I really wanted to feel comfortable to have just this console in my backpack and knowing that even if I wanted to play a 2D fighter, I could just pop it out and do decently with the built-in D-pad. And unfortunately, that to me was a major letdown because although for platformers, like I said, it's much better for 2D fighters, it to me, it just doesn't cut it, especially if you're playing online competitively. Secondly, you know, for someone who has heavily invested into digital games and does have an original Switch, the fact that you can play on both consoles at the same time, even if it's two different games, if you were looking at this for a solution, like I said, for a big family that needs to be able to play multiple consoles at the same time, you're going to be majorly disappointed for the moment because it's not going to work unless you buy your digital games a second time on a separate Nintendo account. But overall, I think that this is a very good console. It has some very positive points. And the upside is that both of the downsides I just mentioned have workarounds. So if you do carry around a pro controller, if you do have a pro controller, the fact that the D-pad won't work for 2D fighters, not gonna be that much of an issue. You can just pop out your, your pro controller. And if you ha invest heavily into physical games, well, the fact that you can play two digital games at the same time isn't gonna be much of an issue for you as well. So I can see basically three types of people that this console is gonna be excellent for. The first, is someone who knows they only play in portable games and doesn't already own a Switch. Basically, Switch Lite is your console. Uh, don't even look at the original Switch. If you know you're not gonna be playing in dock mode, uh, pick up a Switch Lite. It's gonna be cheaper. You got everything you need. And down the road, if you do wanna play motion control games only, uh, buy yourself a pair of Joy-Cons way down the road and you'll be fine. Number two, someone who owns an original Switch has invested mostly in physical games or just is not gonna be playing both consoles at the same time and wants a more comfortable and more portable form factor for their portable console. And third is gonna be a large family that doesn't wanna to have to buy two, three original switches because of the price points and has invested into physical games rather than digital games and wants to save money at Christmas to buy a Christmas gift for one of the younger kids who is maybe not going to play as much on the television or vice versa if the younger kids play at home but the older kids want to take their switch on the road this will be the perfect option for you. So in my opinion the Switch Lite is a revolutionary handheld console and was a good move for Nintendo however there's a couple of things they're going to need to fix. So maybe in a future revision, we'll be getting a better D-pad and maybe soon uh, Nintendo is going to announce that they found a way to prevent game sharing, but still allow a family that has multiple consoles to play two digital games at the same time. So I hope you guys liked this review. I hope you guys appreciated the fact that I took the time to, you know, play exclusively on it for a month. And honestly, I'm going to keep playing on it when I'm out of the house because it is an excellent, you know, handheld console. As usual, I'll be leaving affiliate links down below for you know pr all, pretty much the Switch Lite and some of the products I spoke about in this video. Uh, obviously, it gives the channel a little kickback, and if you guys were going to buy it anyway, hey, why not use the links? Please drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And as usual, I hope I'll see you guys in my next video.